There are several reasons why we feel a united church is crucial for this moment. First of all, because we feel that the gospel itself demands visible union among Christians. We speak of the reconciliation of the Christian community, and that reconciliation means nothing if it does not affect the way we really live and move. Secondly, we feel that a united church could be a more effective witness within the human community, that the, the missionary efforts, the evangelistic efforts, the service to humanity could be far more effective within a united church than in our present divisions. This is fundamentally a spiritual union. It's not merely trying to put people in the same building, uh, except that they covenant together to seek a common life and to work together in the name of Christ. So to that degree, it is a spiritual union, and without that spiritual commitment, uh, you would have a merger and not a union, and there's a quite uh, a vast difference between the two. Uh, beyond that, uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, a union will make a difference, so there will be changes. It's not remain as you are and come join, but there will be implications of change. You plan, uh, I understand you are in college now, is that right? Uh, I took the first year of my three-year phys ed degree, and I plan to go back and uh, take summer school on it. Well, what about, uh, what about these next two games you've got coming up with Omaha? Are you optimistic about well, being able to win up there? It's as simple as just winning one game in Omaha. That's it. If we can win one game there, we've got it. But we haven't won there all year, and it's going to be a tough chore. Naturally, we're going to go after the first one. This is a big one. If we can win that one, we'll put them in an awful big spot. I know that going into the playoffs, uh, even back as far as the Fort Worth series, uh, you wanted to concentrate on using the size that you had. Uh, do you feel that you've uh, been able to, to accomplish that against the Knights? Well, uh, I don't think we've played it as aggressive as we can, and uh, I think that if we play aggressive, especially in their building, I mean, uh, I think this is the way they're going to come out at us, and uh, I think this is the way they feel. And if we hold our own, and more than hold our own, I think that we can. They're not going to push us out of the building. Uh, we'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, if we play as well as we did in the first game there, I think we can win.
out of uh, practice on this. I did an awful lot in the month of uh, February, in month of... All right, this is for Dr. Funk. Oh, I see, uh, for Dr. Funk, Lou and Seth. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> A displaced scientist or aerospace engineer, if they have not registered with the local office of the Texas Employment Commission, should do so immediately uh, in order to be eligible for the program that is now being initiated for them. What specific steps should they take? Uh, when they visit the local office of the Texas Employment Commission, they will be requested to leave an application with that office. Also, that application will be maintained in the file there and efforts made to find them jobs locally. If they cannot, the uh, job cannot be found locally for them, the, their application will be submitted to the National Registry in San uh, Sacramento, California. That's right, I've uh, had a shot of it on Saturday night and I could, uh, I think the peak of it was during the game. And I went home to bed right after, and I didn't wake up till Monday morning. So I think I got rid of it then pretty well. It had to be a kind of a frightening experience to wake up and not know exactly what day it was. Yeah, I was uh, all ready to go out and lay on the, by the pool, and everybody was going to practice. <laughs> Is that a first? That's a 32-hour sleeping for me, yeah. <laughs> Dell, let's talk about uh, the year and specifically about Omaha. Uh, I would guess that having made the second team uh, all CHL squad, that uh, you must be fairly satisfied with the kind of a year that you individually had. Well, I sure am. I, uh, I only came down for one year to see, you know, see what pro was like. I was planning on going back to school. But uh, I'm ready to come back and take a crack at it for another year. And uh, as far as making that second team, I'm quite happy with that. I know there's a couple other fellows on our team, Davey Burroughs and uh, Barry Long, who uh, deserve it just as much as I do. I think maybe the scoring column made up for it. Uh, there's a difference in spinning ball on right-handed hitters and uh, just playing different, I guess. Uh, the, your biggest difference is turning the double play the other way. As I was playing shortstop, I'm coming across the bag. Now I have to go the other way and turn to make the pivot. What uh, what does it do to a fellow's confidence, knowing that he's not quite that sure of what he's doing? Um, well, it's hard to say. You got to play this game with a lot of confidence. If you start asking yourself questions and uh, worrying about certain things about how to play, you're going to get mixed up. You just listen to uh, people like Cal Ripken and listen to what they say, and uh, they're bound to help you. You know, this is only your second year in pro ball. Uh, last year in where? Bluefield, West Virginia. Yes. That was a rookie league, and uh, it's true with everything they say about a rookie league. <laughs> will, you, will you, when you're 50 years old and uh, teasing the grandchildren, have a few stories to tell them? I sure will. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm from Los Angeles, and uh, you go to a small town like Bluefield, and it, the pace is just like night and day. You go, and it's fast-paced from where I'm from, and... You go back to Bluefield and it just slowed down. It was something else. You're, I think you're trying to tell us you're not going to become a country boy. No, I'm not. I'm going to stay in the city. <laughs> I feel real deeply that the mayor and the city attorney in the housing commission misled the uh, uh, citizens of Dallas by telling them that the reason that they were doing this because it was a conflict of interest, knowing all along that HUD had sent down a policy strongly recommending it that each city and each housing authority would consider putting a Canuck on the board. And uh, the community who is not aware of the HUD policy actually believes that the reason that it's no connect. But what I was going to do was actually make the mayor and the housing commission 
state point blank that they do not want tenants on the board for any other reason but a conflict of interest. Come Monday morning, this table in the Tarrant County Commissioner's Court is going to be surrounded by men who are going to be trying to find a replacement for County Criminal Court Number 3, Judge Marvin Simpson. Starting at that end of the table, Howard Green has his own nominee for the job, that County Legal Advisor Jim Morgan. Green explained to me why he's supporting Morgan for the position. Because I think he has a very high sense of public responsibility. I think that he's in the mainstream of political thought in this uh, county. He's eminently qualified and uh, he's done a great job over there in the district attorney's office under very adverse conditions. He wants it and I think he deserves it. From Green we go to Anderson who's expected to vote along with the judge in favor of Morgan. But then we hit the opposition. R.F. Dick Lewis, Commissioner of Precinct Number 3 in Tarrant County, says he's not going to vote for Morgan and he told me why. Well, Jay, I have several reasons uh, why I'm not supporting. One is uh, some three weeks ago, uh, Mr. Morgan contacted me and uh, put in his application at that time for the judgeship, and I thought it was a, a little bit bad timing to be seeking a judgeship that was not vacant at that time. Uh, Judge Simpson was still alive, and I uh, certainly uh, like to have respect for uh, people, and I think it was disrespectful to even mention the appointment at that time. Going down the rest of the table, George Skeet Richardson of Precinct 4 in Tarrant County is expected to go along with Commissioner Lewis in opposing Morgan's appointment to the post. Jerry Mebus then, Precinct Number 2, newly elected, the newest member of the board, holds the swing. It's going to be, apparently, his opinion Monday morning that decides the issue. You know, uh, Coach uh, Ron Newman has, uh, has indicated that he's very, very pleased with the way uh, the team has looked so far. Could you give us an idea of where the improvement has come, do you think? I think a lot of it, Vern, is just downright desire. We had a good team last year, but we really didn't seem to gel, to use a well-known word here in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this year, everybody seems to have the attitude, oh, by gosh, we're going to do it. And we worked hard in practice. We went up to this indoor tournament in St. Louis and really won it purely on super superior fitness and conditioning. And I just think that this is going to carry us through this desire to win and this desire to work really hard to carry us through this season, and we hope to a good season. Would you think, John, that uh, based on your own feeling about this club, that uh, you should be tagged the favorite to win the NASL? I think so. I think that uh, there are perhaps two or three teams that must be strongly favored, particularly Atlanta, of course. Always a strong team. One or two new additions this year, which makes them into a very good team indeed. Uh, the new clubs, well, of course, we don't know too much about those. Washington, strong last year, bound to be strong again this year. But I, I feel that uh, our own team, with the extra strength we've got coming in this year, we're really going to be one to look out for.
foot, uh, the silt ranges from often about four foot to about 20 foot. What's this going to mean if they do decide to dredge it out? How difficult does it look to you it's going to be? No, that's, I'm a geologist, not that's an engineer. <laughs> uh, from the stuff you brought up, does it look as though it'd be too difficult to dredge? It's awful soft and wet. It, it would almost have to be, be a big decision where to pump it or where to dredge it. As a geologist, what does it look to you as going to happen to the lake if they don't dredge it? Well, just in the near future, it'll just be all filtered up. There won't be any lake. I believe that there will be legislation coming out of this Congress that will put the, the major burden on the federal government, which I think is almost imperative in the light of court decisions of reference to residency in an area uh, for eligibility for welfare. Uh, I think that Mr. Mills, and uh, he has stated this, in fact, uh, stated this in Dallas last Thursday night, that uh, he felt that there would be uh, coming out very shortly from his committee, a provision that would set up a maximum of federal participation. Then any state that wanted to go beyond that, uh, it would be up to them. And I, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the thinking at this time would be a maximum of 2400 per year for a family of four. Only a decade ago, leaders of the Fort Worth community expressed concern with the lack of facilities and programs for the furtherance of the study of science at the higher levels within our city. The complex where we stand is a visible symbol of the response of Texas Christian University and of Fort Worth to that challenge and need which was reflected in the expression of concern. Thank you very well, and I appreciate you thank you for your Like, uh, write a little something more than with best wishes, and yet I must take a look and see if there are a lot of people out there. Yeah, so I'll have to hurry. And I've enjoyed working for both of you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure.